So today we're going to be going and hand picking some fish for my fish store. We're going to be driving up to a wholesaler today and as you can see behind me we've got a ton of fish tanks and it's been a little while since I've been to the wholesaler to go hand pick fish. I'm going to bring you guys along today. So I've actually got some plans to expand my store and like if you come out the back we've got this huge breeding area and I've made videos on this in the past like I've talked about this whole entire breeding area where we're you know breeding all sorts of fish. The original idea when I set this up was to have a huge breeding area to breed fish wholesale and to sell stuff in the shop. Now the way that this business has gone has kind of not gone the way I thought it would. As it turns out, we're actually serving customers more than we are wholesale. I've completely cut off my wholesale business now and I'm only selling fish direct to the public through my website and through my retail store. So I've got a retail store in Brisbane, Australia. The retail store was also a tricky thing to balance because we were breeding fish, we were wholesaling fish and we were selling fish retail and selling fish online. We were only open one day a week from 10 till four on Saturdays and that made it really hard for customers to come in, but it made it easy for us to manage. Since I've been doing a bit more traveling for videos and just trying to keep some balance in my life from breeding fish because breeding fish is a 24 seven job, I found it really, really hard to run this business. The thing with breeding fish that makes it brutal is that if you screw up one thing in four months, it's game over. Like you're not gonna get paid for any of your work. So the problem was it was all fine when I'm here but when we start bringing other people in to help like staff inevitably people make mistakes and that's just what happens when you have other people trying to do the same thing and one mistake means that everyone loses well not everyone I lose so we're still gonna be breeding fish but on a smaller scale so what we're gonna be doing is expanding the shop to back out here we're gonna have an extra like 80 tanks in the store and we're gonna be opening up five days a week so we're gonna start going to the wholesaler a lot more, hand picking fish and quarantining them and making sure they're perfect, just to keep these tanks full because I wanna make a nice, beautiful store with a nice range. We're still gonna be keeping this back room. We're keeping this back room for breeding projects, for videos, things like that. And we're also gonna keep this huge amount of grow out space that we've got. We've got 74 foot tanks here and these are gonna become our grow out tanks as well. We're still gonna be doing the same things, the same business, nothing's gonna change. The things that are gonna change is we're gonna have a ton more fish and variety. We're gonna be open a lot more so you guys can come visit us and there's gonna be more to see when you come. So it's gonna be, I think, a win-win-win. And I'm really excited, but part of that plan is the hand-picking fish. And today, I'm just taking you along for a day in the life of someone who owns a fish store. And one of the coolest days in the life is when you actually get to go and buy fish. When I was a little kid, I'm sure you guys are the same. You wanted to go to the fish store and buy everything. Today, I actually get to do that. So come join us on a real fun day and hopefully we get some cool deals, cool fish. Yeah. All right. Like in like that. Come in. This is still one of my favorite wholesalers because you know they're not like a massive, massive wholesaler, it's like a family run business. But look at all these little fighters as well. Just heaps of fancies. So next week, I think they can send them because they're still all in quarantine. So this is actually the quarantine room. So all the fish that they bring in, I don't know how long they have to keep them, but they have to keep them for a certain amount of time before they can be released into the Australian market to make sure that the disease is prevented and all that sort of stuff but there's a lot of cool tetras here at the moment you know they've got look at all these ember tetras probably get some of these today they're so popular these rummies as well they don't look too bad they look good, pretty good rasboras you know they breed on the undersides of leaves that's how they lay their eggs really yeah tetras tetras the pistos as well. They look 
at those males at the back. These are obviously super reds. Neons as well. The other thing I like about this wholesale is neons is most of the ones he gets are local bread. So I always ask, I make sure he gets these local bread ones because they are so much better than the imports. Got barbs. Probably get some of these today. The tiger barbs. I've bred them before, but they um, I only got a few, so I'd like to give that another go. What are these? Minnows. Uh, well, I might get Jason to start putting our order in. So, I was going to say, how are these embers? Are they yeah, good? good? Okay, uh, maybe, what do you reckon? Like 30? Yeah, 30. Congo's good? They're good, they're just small, small and expensive. They do go down, Yeah. 30? 30 Congos. Now the rummies. They have been good. They've actually been good, but we just have so much issues with them, but... I mean, I'd get like... I can probably go through like 80. Just let me know how they go anyway, you know. Sometimes yeah. as soon as they see in there, they can get burnt. I probably steer away from live bearers. Yeah. Um, these lamplight tetras? Yeah, yeah. Happy with the batch, nice size too. 30? 30. Yeah. How much are you doing the pistos yeah, for? If you can do like five really good males. I've got yeah. females, I think I can pair them up with at the shop. They have to be like good, like they can't be like the skinny ones, so. White non eight, they're expensive little buggers. Maybe do like. By well, the way, they put their fins up, look. Same. Yeah, they're cool as. Well, I don't know. Fit 20 in a minute, tank. Yeah. Yeah. I'll probably stay away from Grammys. That's alright, I've read it more popular. Big dolls there. Yeah, they just don't look right. I was gonna say pygmies, how much are pygmies? I can't tell a lot anymore. I'll probably give you 30 points Alright, let's just do that. Yeah. Okay. So, oh, the hatchets, are they? I think they're all sold. I've got 10 sold for next week. So and now it means you're like left for three, so. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, ten, nine, ten. There's probably six in there I can do. It's your ball, they've been a really good batch, but I like Ah, just do give me the six, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're, they're cool. I'd like to have them in the shop. I wasn't really interested in anything in the back room, so we're all good for that. That's but right. in here, what, what have you got in here? Oh, not a lot. What are you doing? Oh, these ones? They're on special. Uh, Where are they from? Yeah, I might leave them. Yeah. Yep, I'll leave them. So these are the ones that Jason picked out for us. Some really nice coins nice and stuff. Nice one, this one. Yeah, that was a winner. That's the benefit when you get to come hand pick, like you find all these like odd ones. What was that one we picked first where it was like, yes, that one. Look at that, like a bumblebee. I've never seen that. A bumblebee. It's even got the lines, kind of. I'm happy with that. Oh right, guys, I'll see you in a few eh? Yeah, thanks so much. How fun was that? That was pretty cool. It's good too because you get to hear what he says yeah. about the fish. Like he's like, you ask are these good quality or is there anything wrong with them? Yeah. And he's like, oh no, I wouldn't. And they're usually pretty honest too. Yeah. Like they'll tell you if they're doing well or doing, you know, if he's losing some or whatever. Hang on a second. Maybe get these black water. Oh, straight white folks. <laughs> Start off some autos, white clouds, some ember tetras. So these are really cool. Look at that. All these female assorted fighters. They're going to be super popular for sure. These are lamp eye tetras, tiger barbs. Rasboras, and then these are Congos, I think. Just little Congos. Oh, Pygmy Cories, he gave me them. So popular. We sell so many Pygmy Cories. Get these all in.
So I've just finished putting all the fish into the shop and I wanted to quickly explain how we do the quarantine here at the room because I personally don't believe it's right to try and turn your fish over super quick like most stores do. Most stores we get these fish in straight away and allow a customer to buy these the second they go in the tank. I think the fish need a bit of time just to settle into the tanks firstly, but also we need to watch these fish and prevent them from getting any further disease. And I'm under the belief that I need to keep my fish for at least a week before I sell them. So this tank is currently in quarantine. And what we do here at the shop is I used to have like a quarantine rack out back. We ran out of space to do that and it was taking staff a lot of time to keep bringing the fish in and out. It was just a pain in the butt. Now what we do is when we buy fish in, they go into a tank in the shop like this. You can see we add them in, we monitor them in the shop, but we put a quarantine thing on the tank. We've got the price and everything there for the fish too, so that people know what to expect when they come in maybe the weekend after. And we have a release date. Now that's if all things go good with this batch of fish. So these aren't for sale yet. In a week's time, they'll be for sale. But I think this is just the right thing to do when you're selling fish and if you want to compare us to other shops, we do this. So it might give you a couple more reasons to come here and buy fish from us. But we're going to try out and see whether they want to eat. So I'm not expecting they will, but I've got some green cuisine here. This is my new fish food. It's still unreleased as of yet, but it's a crushable pellet or you can throw it in as a pellet. So I'll throw it in and sink one down and see if these fish want to attack it yet? There you go. Lamp eyes want it. And I'll crush up some as well for the other fish in here too. But before this video ends, how cool is that? They're all going for it. Isn't that cool? It's one of my favorite tanks. So before this video ends, I want to just quickly show some of the highlight fish that we got while we were out. So the first one I'm going to show you is this white fin ornate tetras. I've never seen these before, they're so cool. They really stand out against the black tanks and they're just going to look so much better with a bit of time. Absolutely love them. I also really like the lamp eye tetras. I think they're like little piranhas. I mean, tetras are part of the piranha family, obviously, so I really like them too. We just got these in too. We didn't get these from the wholesaler, but these came from a local breeder. We've got four leopard frog plecos in. Have a look at them. We're just acclimating them into the tanks now. They're pretty hard to come by. You know, a few people have them, but we don't get them all the time. They're a little bit pricey, but they'll go quick for sure. These were cool too. You liked these, didn't you, Harlan? The Diamond Head Black Neon Tetras. Never seen these before, ever. And they're truly stunning. Here, let's give them a feed. I reckon they'll eat, but let's give them a second. They're probably hungry as, there you go, look, coming for it straight away. So they'll be available in a week. But yeah, I reckon we'll wrap it up here. Um, like I said, if you want to come visit us, Unit J1, 241 Station Road, Yorong Pili, Brisbane. And yeah, you can buy some of these fish online and I'll see you guys in the next video.